Okay, so you're requesting a deep dive on something that's got, like, everyone talking. Celebrity scandals, questionable party themes, and maybe even, like, how quickly we turn serious allegations into jokes. Buckle up. We've got excerpts from page six articles about uh, Sean Diddy Combs' ongoing legal situation. This isn't just about celebrity gossip, though. Um, it brings up some important questions about how we react to serious accusations and uh, the power dynamics at play. Yeah, and I think it's interesting, too, how this whole thing is playing out online. There's this weird mix of outrage and then also, like, really dark humor. And it all kind of circles back to this question of, like, how do we react to this kind of situation? Exactly. And it all starts with Landon Barker, Travis Barker's son, celebrating his 21st birthday. Normal, right? Mm -hmm. But then things get a little... Uh, a little messy. A little messy. Videos from this party surface online, and let's just say the theme is raising eyebrows. Because suddenly you've got servers bringing out trays of baby oil <laughs> with, a, like, flashing lights. And if you're not connecting those dots, well, that's where the Diddy connection comes in. Okay, so for anyone who needs a refresher, Sean Diddy Combs is currently under investigation for some, like, incredibly serious charges. We're talking sex trafficking, assault, racketeering. And this is where those flashing lights and baby oil become more than just a questionable party theme. Part of the investigation into Diddy revolves around these alleged uh, freak-off parties he threw, where allegedly things got very out of hand, and one of the accusations repeatedly surfacing, you guessed it, baby oil was involved, a lot of it. Yeah, and I have to admit, when I first saw those headlines about the Barker birthday party, I laughed. Baby oil, really, it felt absurd. But then, like, the air got sucked out of the room when you remember what those accusations against Diddy actually entail. You know, it just lands differently. That's exactly it, isn't it? You have this almost instinctive reaction of this is ridiculous. And then you're kind of slammed with the weight of what this party theme is trivializing. And mm. that's what's sparking so much debate. It's like that awkward laugh that dies in your throat when you realize, oh, wait, this is actually really messed up. Because for Landon Barker and those at the party, it might just be a joke, right? A reference to something they've heard about, maybe even find edgy or funny. But for the people involved in Diddy's case, the alleged victims... This is serious, potentially life-altering trauma. Ah. And that's where the whole thing starts to feel. Off. So you've got this bizarre juxtaposition of a 21st birthday bash mm. and these incredibly heavy allegations. And everyone is trying to figure out, like, where the line is. Where is the line between dark humor and, like, straight-up insensitivity? Especially when you're talking about something as serious as sex trafficking. It's even more complicated when you consider, like, the power dynamics at play, right? Diddy's wealth and influence are undeniable. And those factors, they inevitably color how people perceive the situation and the allegations against him. And how they perceive this party, too. Like, if it had been anyone else throwing that party with that theme, would it have even made a blip on the radar? It's hard to say. But what we do know is that this whole thing has sparked a conversation. And it's not just about Diddy, is it? It's about how we as a society grapple with these sorts of situations. How do we talk about serious allegations without losing sight of the very real human cost? How do we balance the need for due process with our own sense of what's right and wrong? It's a lot to unpack and we're just getting started. But before we delve into the allegations themselves and what they could mean, let's rewind a bit to the party that kicked off this whole conversation. Why did people react so strongly? Was it just the baby oil or was there something more at play? So we've got this party, right? And honestly, on the surface, it's almost too easy to just dismiss it as like a bad taste joke. You know? Yeah, I mean, is it even a joke? It, yeah. It's hard to say. Exactly. But the intensity of the reactions that we saw online, yeah. those tell a very different story. This wasn't just like a couple of people raising their eyebrows and moving on. People were calling this party out as like tone deaf, disrespectful. Yeah. You even saw people drawing like direct comparisons to making light of sex trafficking. Yeah, and it's interesting, right? Because you can't really separate those reactions from the context. It's not just some like random party with a weird theme this is directly referencing a high profile case with incredibly serious allegations and this is where i think you know we can really start to think about the power of social media right yeah. think about it without those videos going viral without that online outrage would this party have even like registered on diddy's radar would we even be having this conversation probably not it would have been another celebrity birthday bash forgotten as quickly as it trended <laughs> but instead it's become this like this lightning rod right oh, yeah. for a much larger conversation it's forced us to confront our own reactions to ask ourselves okay where is the line and more importantly like 
why am I drawing the line there? And let's be real. It's so easy to get caught up in the outrage, right? Like to fire off a tweet condemning it all. But I think this situation is kind of asking something more of us. It's forcing us to look beyond the surface level, beyond the shock value, and really grapple with the weight of what's actually being alleged here. Because remember, at the heart of this are the accusations against Diddy. And those are anything but a joke. We're talking about racketeering. Yeah. Which, you know, in this context, right. allegedly involves Diddy using his companies and influence to, like, control and exploit these women. And then there's the sex trafficking charges, which I think are often misunderstood, honestly, because it's not always about physically forcing someone, right? It can involve coercion, mm. manipulation, taking advantage of someone's vulnerability. Exactly. And when we talk about coercion, we're talking about, like, threats, intimidation using someone's immigration status against them, controlling their finances. These are incredibly powerful tools used to trap people in really exploitative situations. And we can't ignore the sheer number of accusers here. It's not just one or two people coming forward. It's dozens all telling really similar stories. And that has to count for something, right? Absolutely. When you see that many people making such similar allegations, it's very, very hard to just dismiss it all as just a coincidence or a misunderstanding or whatever. And then you have the case that attorney um, Ariel Mitchell kid is handling. This one hit particularly hard, I think, because it involves allegations of drugging and assault. And suddenly this isn't just about like questionable parties anymore. You know, this mm -hmm. is about a pattern of alleged abuse that is honestly really disturbing. And these are allegations that it's important to note Diddy categorically denies his legal team argues that these accusers are actually motivated by money, that they're trying to exploit his wealth and fame. Which is, of course, a very common defense in these types of cases, right? Immediately, it calls into question the accuser's motives and can make it even harder for victims to come forward. Absolutely. And that's why it's absolutely crucial to remember that in the eyes of the law, Didi is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Of course, of course. Yeah. But even with that presumption of innocence, it's impossible to ignore the gravity of these accusations. We're talking about potentially decades in prison if he's found guilty. And we're talking about, you know, the lasting impact that these allegations have on everyone involved, right? Mm -hmm. A really stark reminder that behind the headlines, behind the jokes, behind the memes, there are real people whose lives have been deeply affected by all of this. Which brings us back to that initial question, right? Why did this story, this party, get to you? What is it about this situation beyond the like the celebrity factor that makes it so noteworthy? It's like, I don't know, this whole thing, it's become a Rorschach test, hasn't it? Like you look at this party, you look at the allegations against Diddy and what you see, it kind of says something about you, about how you view wealth and power and accountability. Oh, absolutely. I mean, are you seeing a celebrity being like unfairly targeted? Mm -hmm. Or are you seeing a system that maybe too often protects the powerful at the expense of the vulnerable? I think that's what makes this whole conversation so, so important. Yeah. And it can be a lot to process, right? It's almost tempting to just check out, to be like, well, this is all just too messy, too complicated. I don't even know where to begin. But I think that's where we miss the point. Because this isn't just about Diddy, right? He's in a way become this kind of symbol Right. A representation mm -hmm. of these larger, like systemic issues. Yeah. But I think as a society, we often really struggle to even just like confront head on. Yeah. Yeah. And it's those issues, those like uncomfortable truths that tend to linger long after the headlines fade and everybody's moved on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So as we kind of start to wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave you with this. What's your takeaway? When you strip away all the celebrity gossip, the shock value, what resonates with you? Yeah, what sticks with you? Yeah. Because the conversation definitely doesn't end here. You know, this case is far from over. Yeah. And these issues, power, exploitation, consent, they're woven into the fabric of our society, really. And I think what matters, what we really need to be thinking about, is how we choose to engage with them and how we hold each other accountable. It's about, like you said, listening to the people who have been silenced, examining our own biases and pushing for a world where these kinds of conversations aren't met with silence or just dismissed as like, oh, another celebrity scandal. That's the deep dive. 